Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I'm gonna show you some simple steps that you can take to create a recessed paneled wall uh, to your designs whenever you're using the Design Files 3D floor planner. Now, in this video, we're gonna be doing this by using the wall editor within the 3D floor planner. And essentially what I've done here is I've created this uh, same design, but I've just removed all of the wall edits from it so that we can rebuild it from scratch. And if you're interested, I also have another video that you can watch that will show you how to create this little nook area with a built-in bench. But for now, we're gonna be focusing on the paneled wall. So the way that I would approach this, first and foremost, is to load up your uh, 3D floor plan. Um, before you get kick-started on your designs, you can go into the gear icon right here and you might wanna switch your measurements from feet and inches to inches. The reason I say that is that because whenever you're building out a paneled wall, you're gonna to have to do a little bit of math to define how wide each of the panels are gonna be. And for me, it's just easier to do that when I'm looking at everything in inches versus feet and inches. And of course, if you're on the metric system, then your uh, measurements will show in centimeters. Now, once you've done that, you can pick your first wall that you're gonna edit. So just click on any of the walls within the space. You'll see an edit icon, click on that, and that will bring you into the wall editor. Now in the wall editor, you're gonna see the wall that you're gonna be focused on. Over here on the right side panel, or on the right side, you're gonna see your textures panel. And you'll also see that you have the ability to add shapes and trim to the wall. And down here in the bottom left-hand corner, this is your 3D previewer. So you can click on these two blue sections right here to expand it and contract it as you need to. But the nice thing about your 3D previewer is that it's gonna show you how all the edits that you're adding to the wall here are actually gonna show within your 3D design. So it just allows you to see how things are coming to life. Now I'm gonna close that down. And the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna divide this wall into two sections, an upper and a lower section. So I'm gonna to click to add a shape. I'm gonna click on the rectangle option. And then I'm just gonna click on one of the bottom corners here of the wall, move out my mouse, and then I'm just gonna to click to release. And now I've divided the wall into two separate rectangular shapes. Now I'm gonna zoom in here because I actually want the bottom half to be four feet tall. So I'm gonna drag this down to 48 inches right there. And the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna apply a paint color. So I'm gonna go into the paint library right here. You'll see the collections that are available. You can go into any of these collections and you can browse by specific color name or color code or you could just browse and if you see a color you like, click on it, click on the wall and it will fill that wall with that color. Um, in this case, I actually have a specific paint color that I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna go into my recents because I've already used a number of colors and I wanna take this one right here and apply it to the wall. Now that I've done that, the next thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some trim. So I'm gonna click up here in the add trim option. You'll see that you've got crown molding, baseboard and chair rail. So I'm gonna click into baseboard there's a number of options you can choose from, so just select the one that you want and it will automatically apply to the wall. Now over here, you're gonna see that the right side panel has changed to show the baseboard properties. So if you wanted to change the height of the baseboard, you could, you can use the up down arrows here or you can just highlight the text and put in your own number and you can also change up the baseboard depth. Down here, this is where you would change the finish. So I'm gonna click the edit icon I'm gonna go back into the paint library, back into my recents, and I'm gonna apply that same green color. And I would do the exact same steps for the chair rail. So we'll just select a chair rail. Um, in this case, the chair rail is showing as 32 inches up from the floor. So I need to just change this up so that it's gonna be in line with my, uh, the top of my uh, wainscoting here. And you can use the up down arrows and you can also highlight the number and just put in your own. Now, in this case, I'm going to, again, change up the finish. So I'll go into paint, into recents, and I'm just gonna click that same green color. And then if I open this up, you'll see exactly what it looks like in the 3D previewer. Now, at this point, what I'd actually do is uh, I'm going to save this design. And before I add the recessed panels to this wall, I'm gonna save this design. I'm gonna come back into the 3D view here. I'm going to copy this surface click on any of the other walls, and I'm gonna apply it to this entire room. Now, the reason I wanna do that is because I just wanna get this same chair rail height, color, baseboard color, all of that onto all of the walls within the space, so I don't have to do those steps every single time I edit a new wall. At this point, now I'm gonna be able to go back into the wall editor, and I can add in the number of panels that I want to this wall, 
And because I've got a shorter wall here, I'm going to add in a different number of panels. So I'm basically copying the elements that are going to be the same across all the walls so that I can just add it to every single wall. And then I'll go in and I'll make my edits for the individual parts that are going to be a little different for each wall. So let's go back in now. And now we can start adding in the recessed panels. So what I'm going to do here is um, I need to figure out how wide each of those panels are going to be. So in order to do that, I'm just going to open up my calculator and I'm going to take the total length of this wall. So 101.25. And I know that I want to add five panels to this wall. And I know I want to have three inch framing between each of the panels. So because I'm going to have five panels, that means I'll have six sections of framing and each of those six sections is going to be three inches. So that equals 18, three times six is 18. So I'm going to subtra uh, subtract that from the total wall amount. That's going to leave me with 83.25. And this is the remaining amount that will be used for the recessed panels. So I'm going to divide that by five, which means that each of my recessed panels should be 16.65 inches wide. Now in our case, the system's going to round up to the nearest quarter inch. So I'm going to make each of my panels 16.75. So here we go. We're going to add a shape. I'm going to select the rectangle option. I'm going to click on the wall and just create a rectangular shape. And the next thing that I want to do here is I can see that it's already three inches from the wall. <laughs> nice. It's already 16.75. So that's great. And then what I want to do here is I want to make sure I've got a three inch gap up here and a three, well, not a gap, but framing up here and a three inch frame down here. So if I click on the chair rail, I can see that the chair rail is two and a half inches. So if I want this to be a three inch gap, then I need to make sure that this is 5.5. So we're just going to bring this up to 5.5. And then this baseboard is nine. So I need to bring this down. So the total number is 12. So there we go. So nine plus three is going to equal 12. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go back into the paint um, color library, back into recents. I'm going to click on that same green color and click on the rectangular shape that I've added. And the very last step that I need to do here is to make this a recessed panel. So the way that I would do that is by using the extrusion tool over here, and I'm just going to make it a negative one. So now that I've done that, all I have to do is duplicate this panel all the way across the wall. And I'm going to use my left, right, uh, up, down arrows on my keyboard just to shift it. So I've got three inches between each. And you'll notice that as I move this out, I've got red guidelines that kind of snap uh, the shape into place so that it matches on the bottom edge here. So everything is perfectly aligned. And then we'll just duplicate this again. Use my left, right, up, down arrows and one more. And there we go. So now I've got all of my panels in. We're going to hit save and that's what it's going to look like. And then what you can do is you can basically just click on your next wall and you can decide how many panels you're going to put on this wall. Use the same uh, math technique and it'll make it easy for you to define how wide each of those panels should be. Uh, but those are essentially the steps. So definitely jump into your design files account. Give this, uh, give these steps a try. Um, if you have any questions about how to edit the walls within your 3d designs, or even just how to use any of the tools within the 3d floor planner, always reach out to us. We're happy to help. And thanks so much for watching.